Yeah, I'm gonna drop my pen. Buddy, put your thinking caps on. Oh, keep the music going. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool, man. We don't want to stop that, man. All right, everybody. Welcome to Problem Solver Politics with your host, Carden Ellis. Today, we got an awesome show planned out. I, I, <laughs> I am so excited. I don't even know how to introduce. I'm more excited just the fact that you found out that's my legal name. I yeah. mean... Oh, here, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can't get ahead of ourselves here. Okay, in the studio today, we've got DJ Hamburger, all right? Some of you may know him from his, uh, I wouldn't say epic, but definitely um, influential, not career, gosh, I am fighting for these words. I would say- If you're looking for the word His public, yeah, his legendary public commentary at the SB54 meeting. As you know, in Problem Solver Politics, we talk about politics, but we do it in a respectful manner in order to solve today's problems, both national and local. We had a local issue recently, uh, SB 54, Senate Bill 54, talking about the arrest and the referral of uh, criminal illegal immigrants to ICE or other governing bodies that created quite a stir over at City Hall. It's not going to take up the entire length of our show because we spent last show talking about it, but after last show, we had the... The public hearing down in City Hall, which was Super Bowl-esque, shall we say. I was I was thinking for the word contentious. I was like, the tension <laughs> okay. was definitely there, yeah. All right, so um, anyway, before we go anywhere, first things first, we do things in order. Happy Mother's Day. This is your last chance before you look really weak sauce to text your mother and send her a really cute gif. Or a really cute pick, or else you just look like a horrible, horrible son or daughter. Um, and uh, just do a good job on that one. Don't botch that one. And, you know, if they're really looking for something to do, just tell them to tune into Problem Solver Politics. We're on Facebook Live. And uh, if you're listening right now and you want to see us as well, make sure you check out uh, KHTS Radio on Facebook Live. So, let's get started. Problem Solver Politics, show 51318. I'm going to start out a little bit uh, commenting commenting somewhat about why I started this show and the nature of this debate. I was at the Staples Center um, recently. Uh, One of my uh, friends who has had a very successful career in entertainment, successful enough that he has not a booth, but a box at the Staples Center, one of those really expensive, um, really nice areas where they cater you and so on and so forth. And he invites various dignitaries and celebrities and so on and so forth to come and hang out in his box. So I guess one of the celebrities canceled, so he called me up, (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. I got to be the fill-in, right? But it was a great experience. And what was interesting was I met a couple of very successful Netflix executives and a couple of other production company executives who'd done so well in life, they were about to retire, finishing up on some final projects. And I kind of started talking with them, what, what they thought about the modern climate in entertainment, also in politics, really about everything. And one of these conversations, I was so enthralled with this man that I asked him just point blank, I said, so what do you think of the world right now? Like, What's a man your age that remembers landing on the moon, remembers the world coming together for so many of these different things? How do you feel in, in 2018? And he actually got, I mean, almost emotional. And it was so interesting to see such a powerful man in this world who literally controls, I would say, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of job creation in Hollywood, um, almost tear up. And he said, you know what? In my lifetime right now, I've just learned that we need to come together or we just can't survive. And that was a lot of... That, that was kind of an inspiration for this show. And the reason why we call this problem solver politics is because, yes, it is politics, but we're different. We, uh, like my friend DJ Hamburger says, we like to keep it academic. We like, this isn't a rant show. This is not a, um, you know, pick your side and we're going to talk about why the other side is so mis- mistaken. We literally want to aid in that process of coming together. This show loves both sides. And I don't say that to be this hippie, oh, everybody's right, because guess what? They're not, okay? When wealth negotiates with poverty, 
Wealth has nothing to gain by compromise. When health is negotiating and conversing with disease, health has nothing to gain through compromise. There is a right and a wrong. There is an evil and there is a righteousness. But if we're honest with ourselves, 70% of political affiliation is social. We are either born into it, bred into it, or associated into it. And it is our job as elevated, I wouldn't say politicians, but political thinkers and political activists to rise above the childish rant and to engage in problem solving so we indeed can come together. I seek those who cohabitate. Argentinian ants, actually, interestingly enough, are successful this way. Most ants if they stray into another ant of the same species colony, though they're of the same species, they just destroy each other. They fight to the death. Argentinian ants, the most successful ant in the world, has survived by simply learning to cohabitate with those of their own species. And that's what problem solver politics is about. We're going to talk politics. We are going to rock politics, okay? And we will fight bare knuckle boxing style over the principles of politics, okay? But the only enemy... In this arena is the person or the ideology that does not seek cohabitation and peaceful and respectful dialogue. Unfortunately, we do have a pernicious element of our society right now that seeks to destroy that respectful dialogue. Some would call it leftist secularism. I don't think that's necessarily completely fair. Some would call it uh, identity politics. I think that's a little bit better. But um, at the end of the day... We are going to be very pixie choosy about the words we use in our best effort to not ostracize those that we seek to outreach towards. Now, for example, if you are somebody on the left, don't touch that dial. Don't bounce. All right. We seek to speak with you to speak to your ideals that if we ever do want to expose, um, they would, it would be an exposure of how you would be getting – the best elements of yourself and your ideals used against us. And the same thing goes with Republicans. I, I, Republicans and Democrats both have some very mistaken things going on right now. So anyway, I would say identity politics and political correctness is the most pernicious enemy of, of this admiration that we must have for each other. It divides people into groups based upon immutable characteristics but beyond their immediate control and the demands they operate in a predictable manner. And if they do not operate in that predictable manner. They will be maligned, their character will be assassinated, and this pernicious element of our society will seek to destroy them. Identity politics, this political correctness, strips our communities of their faith in God and their faith in each other that really gets us through the hard times. So this battleground we are fighting right now is what we call the war of ideas. But it is a battle amongst friends and family. We are literally at the Thanksgiving table, the proverbial Thanksgiving table, having dinner talking politics. And we must be able to enjoy the dessert together and meet for Christmas a month later. For those of you that watch The Walking Dead, though we caught Negan, there must be something later. This is opposed by identity politics by the worst aspects of leftism, of fascism. And I say leftists, not liberals, because liberalism is beautiful. It's conversant. It's open. It seeks minority rights, women's rights. It seeks a conversation and a dialogue. Leftism, on the other hand, identity politics and fascism demand control. Control of our economies, control of our personal lives, control of our actions due to those immutable characteristics. It, 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 characteristics, pardon me. It exploits its followers under the guise of empowerment. I believe De Leon, upon my research, I believe De Leon wrote SB 54, not out of an overwhelming desire to help the immigrant community, a desire that all of us, Republican or Democrat, share. In my research, in my conversations with people too fearful to come on the air, unfortunately, but that do work in Sacramento, I believe SB 54 was a massive commercial. A commercial well, for a man who desired, thank you, DJ, for coming in on my, I just got to the beautiful part of my monologue, yeah. and here he comes in calling me, duh. Yeah. 
Anyway, the uh, I believe that this was written. I, look, I just I give people the benefit of the doubt until I'm completely sure. And I believe that unfortunately this was a very large commercial for De Leon when he's going to go up against Feinstein and all the people that just fought in that city hall and called all those people ethnocentric and xenophobic, phobic and racist and homophobic and Islamophobic and any other phobic, phobic slash patriarchal or whatever they could throw in there just became a useful idiot. Useful idiot is a term that is unfortunately and incorrectly accredited to Lenin when he was founding the Red Army that ultimately established communism in Russia. But he didn't actually say it. An economic theorist in 1947 said it. But these are the people that oftentimes defend socialism right before it leads to communism. And they're considered useful by the leftists and the power mongers that would like to use people's good ideals against them. So today we're going to talk about this battle. And today we're going to talk about one group that took away a major win and another group that took away a major loss. And both of them have one thing in common in this battle. It's how they reacted to the opportunity to stand up or to back down from a moral ground. That's the purpose of the show, to generate informed listeners who stand up to moral evils no matter which side they come from. And if we are honest, we know that our side, no matter which one that is, has these pernicious elements too. Unfortunately, as I've mentioned before, Democrats and liberals have leftist elements in them that will disguise their desire for control and power as charity. I have also seen on the Republican side, dare I say, a fear of change and a desire for national security to breed many breaches of privacy and overreaches in government that I think could brand the label fascism if we went really, really, really far. So, the purpose of this show is to bring people together to problem solve these elements, not just for, for political theater, but for political progress. And we can't do that if we are in different rooms. There's a lovely story coming out of Africa of five blind men that tried to identify what animal they were touching. All five blind men were circled around an elephant. One felt its foot, one felt its tusk, one felt its trunk, one felt its side, and one felt its tail. The man who was holding the tail said, oh, it's a zebra. The one who was holding its tusk said, oh, this is a bull. The one that was holding its trunk said it was an anaconda, so on and so forth. All of them swore that they were correct and that the others were fools until the gods came, cured them of their blindness, and they realized that, oh, we were all touching the exact same thing. It is an elephant. I truly believe that when human beings can come together and contemporarily cure themselves of their political blindness, we can come together and 99.9% .9 of us will truly agree on the solution to a problem. We share 99% the same genetic information as humans that chimpanzees have. 99% of the same genetic information a chimpanzee has, we have. Now, that 1% makes us really different, all right? But it does show that I believe Republicans and Democrats can come together and share 99% of their views in common. That's what makes our country beautiful, makes it great. So this does not always mean compromise. As I said before, when health negotiates with illness, health has nothing to gain through compromise. When evil negotiates with righteousness, it has nothing to gain through compromise. And when purity negotiates with impurity, it has nothing to gain through compromise. We did not come here to always compromise. We came here to win. So sometimes compromise is not the answer, and vigorous debate is. But we cannot have that debate being in separate corners and like my newfound friend in the staples center mm. said we must come together or we will not survive and anyone stopping us and restoring this beautiful country will be exposed watch out political correctness you are on the prowl but your time is up because so are we and we are coming for you watch out identity politics you are powerful but so are we and we will defy you watch out leftist fascist secularism you are vicious but so are we and we will conquer you this is problem solver politics we'll be back in a minute looking for the best return on your investment do you want your hard-earned dollar stretched to do the most good for your community that means that out of every dollar donated a full 99 cents goes directly to the need being addressed 
Help the Children is in Santa Clarita, helping Santa Clarita families and other Santa Clarita charities. When compared to more than 1.2 million charities in America, Help the Children is rated the seventh most efficient charity in the nation, operating on a 1% overhead, and we receive no government funding for our operations in the community. If you are looking to donate to the good of the Santa Clarita community, please consider partnering with Help the Children. What is donated specifically for Santa Clarita is kept in Santa Clarita and will help over 5,000 families and over 10 other agencies. Please visit our website and or call our office to make a difference in our awesome town community. 702-8852-helpthechildren.org Santa Clarita Philharmonic has begun its season of free concerts. The SCP is a nonprofit community-based volunteer symphony orchestra comprised of local musicians from throughout the Santa Clarita Valley who are dedicated to providing quality classical music for the residents of the Santa Clarita Valley. Like the Santa Clarita Philharmonic on Facebook or visit santaclaritaphilharmonic.org for more information. If you are at least 55 years of age and have a torn or irreparable rotator cuff, you may be eligible for a no-cost clinical trial at Southern California's Orthopedic Institute's Valencia Clinic. Call 818-901-6600, extension 1525, or visit rotatorcuffstudy.com to learn about a study of an investigational shoulder implant. Call 818-901-6600, extension 1525, or visit rotatorcuffstudy.com. Sponsored by MicroAir Surgical Instruments. Your hometown station. KHTS wants to help you save money. Go to shopkhts.com for half price certificates to your favorite restaurants and businesses located right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Huge savings on your favorite places. You can also buy them right here at the KHTS studio during business hours. Start saving now. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Do you like to rock across Africa? Then the wait is over. Africa rocks! Africa's Greatest Hits is now available at the San Diego Zoo! And who could forget 99 red baboons? <laughs> or the African Crested Porcupine Smash Hit, I Got Quills to Pay the Bills! Hey, don't get too close. And the hits keep on coming. Africa Rocks has all your favorites from six different African habitats. Hungry like a leopard. Ibex is bad. Harder, better, falsa, stronger. And a new track from Kendrick Lieber. Now, Larry. Yes, Chuck? A collection of this magnitude, I'd fly to Africa. <laughs> well, don't pack your bags, friend. Africa Rocks is only available right here at the San Diego Zoo. Wow, that really does rock. No, it Africa Rocks. Welcome to Africa Rocks. Experience six different African habitats, including our first ever aquatic enclosure with African penguins, only at the San Diego Zoo. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. This is Cardin Ellis, your host, and we are here with DJ Hamburger. The one and only, according to Facebook. Thank you. <laughs> the one and only, according to Facebook. Awesome. Okay, I got to introduce this guest a little bit. And just to show you this man's sass, this man's style, I actually, he, he peered, if you're looking on Facebook Live, you can see, he peered over my shoulder and he was looking at my show notes. And my first note was, why DJ Hamburger, question mark. And then he straight up looks at me and says, because the government doesn't lie. And I was like, the government out. doesn't lie. And so I gave him my ID card and he was like, what? Your name is DJ Hamburger? And I was like, yes. Like, I, you asked me what my name was at City Hall last week. And I was like, DJ Hamburger. Well, look, okay. He didn't believe me. He was like, I thought that was like some Swedenim or whatever. In all fairness, or, in like, all fairness. <laughs> DJ Hamburger sounds like an alias, all right? And I was thinking, maybe he's a DJ. I mean, he dresses hip, okay, you know? And well, I, I do like that you like my style. Thank and you. Then, um, you know, I was thinking maybe DJ Hamburger is like his stage name or it's his alias or whatever. So I found out that um, he doesn't like me mention his actual first name, but his middle you. name is James. Yes. So yes. it's uh, D. James, and Hamburger is his legitimate last name. So he's a really cool guy. We had a chance to uh, catch up and talk before the show. So, DJ, what's your story? Talk to me. 
Well, I was born on a Thursday back in July <laughs> in 1990. Uh, how much time do we have, actually, to talk about me? No, tell us what brought you to the SB54 meeting, man. Tell us what brought you there. Oh, oh gosh. I can't believe that video. Oh, my goodness. He, so, is, he has a video that has 47,000 views right now, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody actually took... Some rando did that. Yes. Rando, which rhymes with Brando <laughs> and Rambo. You are an army guy, aren't you? Um, actually took a video of him speaking in the public comment section on the SB 54 meeting. And, you know, actually, before you talk and do tell us your story, I have to, I have to give you credit to our listeners here. This man, the reason why I invited him on my show is because if you missed the SB 54 meeting or if you watched it on the video feed, if you watched it on the video feed, you're actually missing a little bit because the microphone that they tap into in the public comment section does not do justice to the amount of cheers oh, wow. and catcalls <laughs> and angry outbursts Wait that happen in cat the crowd. Wait a minute, I had catcalls? That's news to me. Okay, Wait, did hey, you get their name by any chance? Uh, no, but I did no, get their number. Uh, oh, thank uh, no, you. <laughs> Hit me kidding. up after the show. So... You, it did not do justice, the video feed, showing the intense fervor in the room. And DJ got up, and the best part is I was sitting in back, and I was with all the Marxists. I'm, I'm just kidding. The I was with, uh, Yeah, I was with a lot of the progressive crew, and some of them were really cool people. We actually had them on the show before. Um, but you got up, and, oh, the second you opened their mouth— because identity, identity politics rung strong in our in our society here, they started thinking, yeah, he's on our team. Yeah, and they started saying, yeah, yeah, DJ, yeah. They started cheering for you. I mean, and you were two minutes incognito. You And he was just respectfully saying, hey, it's my first time talking to the city council. What's up? Yeah, and for my first time to be viewed 47,000 yeah. times, I'm yeah, like, and wow. They, they who started would have thought? cheering. Yeah. And then the second you said, and you rounded the corner, and you said, and it's for these reasons I would like to recommend we not be a sanctuary city. They, you should have they seen the looks it. on their faces. Oh, I heard them. That's they <laughs> lost it. Okay. They absolutely <laughs> lost it. And the best part was I started laughing so hard <laughs> from the bottom of my gut. that I pointed at him. I said, you guys just got so catfished. All right. And even the redheaded curly girl that had gotten up a little bit before you started laughing and recognizing the humor of this situation. So everybody thought you were going to be a complete and total lefty. You know, I would really like to, on the topic of, of that moment, I really had this internal monologue with myself about uh -huh. how this highlights so many problems in our society today and in our country that uh -huh. we are so quick to pigeonhole people and not listen to them and not give their thought the time of day. We just are very quick to put someone in, oh, in that tribe or in that tribe. Therefore, I am either for you or against you. Very, very few people today relax enough to just chill out and, and hear someone speak. And I think that's something that California could really lead the way with because we're so chill out here, right? Like we, we really, so. really are, yeah. but we don't do politics. So it's very hard for us to like ease into that chillness with our governance system in the United States. And the fact that those kids in the back thought that I was this raging left. And in fact, the video <laughs> on YouTube is labeled as this leftiest, leftist millennial comes to Jesus and 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 and, and, and I no, thought don't get to me myself, wrong, you should come to Jesus, I was like, but I don't I was think like, you did at the SB54 meeting. I just I thought to myself, I was like, anyone who knows me knows that's not me. I'm not a leftist, and very rarely am I described as a millennial. And you know, so it was really interesting that everybody just assumed that because you know, I'm awesome. I'm there for this politically or that politically. Was, was It really speaks to volumes to what's wrong with our system today. And not our system. Our system is perfectly fine, but it's, it's our society and us as individuals and the heat that comes with, with governance and the heat that comes with deciding important policy positions. Yeah, so yes. Is there a way to make this bigger or taller? So, <laughs> so DJ Hamburger, guys, just so yeah. you understand, he's an elected member of the 38th Assembly District Republican Central Committee. He's a governing board member of the Log Cabin Republicans 
of Los Angeles County, and his YouTube video has been yep. viewed over as of five minutes ago, forty-seven thousand times just from what Tuesday. <laughs> oh, so, <boy. laughs> so talk to me, DJ. I mean, here's two organizations we don't talk to uh, talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. Log Cabin Republicans, and you yes. just got elected to the 38th Assembly District of the Re- Republican Central Committee. Tell me a little yes. bit about this and about that cool military ID that you just whipped out. We got to give you credit <laughs> well, where credit before is due. I, before I, I, I should preface all of my comments with saying that they are my individual thoughts and opinions, and they are not endorsed by anyone other than myself. And especially Starbucks, considering I'm addicted to caffeine and I love coffee. <laughs> so don't hold um, it against them, Starbucks. <laughs> that's, that's, yes. But, um, yes, yeah, so Log Cabin Republicans. We uh, were founded in 1977, I believe. 1976, 1977. I wasn't around back then, if you can't tell. <laughs> I wasn't around then. But we were founded by Ronald Reagan, and we fight for LGBT plus inclusion in the Republican Party and in our country as a whole. Um, we believe that that free market capitalism and conservatism as a whole should not be dictated by your DNA, your skin tone, who you who you love, and who you are. Um, your thoughts are not beholden to your DNA. Um, we are all given free thought and free expression, and we should all exercise that. And the Log Cabin Republicans is an organization within the Republican Party that really fights for, or really stands and, and works for LGBT plus inclusion in all aspects of our society. And it's a lot of important work that we do. And if anyone is curious about learning more about the Log Cabin Republicans, they can go to logcabin.org or logcabinlosangeles.org or .com. Excuse me, it's .com. Los- logcabinlosangeles.com is our local website. Sounds like an Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> but it's easily rememberable. Log on. <laughs> it's much easier. And we're named Log Cabin after Abraham Lincoln because he was the founder of our party and our first party's president, our party's first president. So, um, because, you know, he was famously born in a log cabin and all of that. So this is why so. I have DJ coming on the show because yep. he breaks the mold. All right. Usually when people just like all of the, uh, all of our progressive <laughs> friends that were sitting in the back of that SB 54 meeting were convinced, oh, he's got to be on our team. He's got to be on our team. Cause we hear his voice or something like <laughs> yes. that. All right. Yeah. They, and- they, 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 they start going nuts <laughs> thinking he's on our side, but then all of a sudden you have a man yeah. giving an articulate conservative argument that goes against what they thought he should have stood for. And they got really angry and it was really yeah, funny. So the, the, I, I love highlighting people like this. <clears throat> although I do have to say, okay, honestly, people, I'm amazed that the gay community is not so much more Republican considering the concept of limited government and minorities having rights with the majority ruling. Like, I was always raised – like, I'm a member of the Pink Pistols. I don't know if mm-hmm. you ever heard of the Pink Pistols. Yes, All right? they were in our booth. They were in the booth neighboring ours at L.A. Pride this last year. Yes, yes. It's and a- our other neighbor was the L.A. Sheriff's – or uh, the, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's. So we were okay. quite locked and loaded. Yes. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun yes. intended. So, so the Pink Pistols is this group – that says, okay, look, you know, if you're gay and you say that you're, you're fearful for your life because of, you know, violence or whatever, fine. We're going to teach you the most American thing known to man, and that's self-defense. Mm-hmm. If you feel threatened, here's a gun, and we're going to show you how to use it because gays with guns don't get bashed, all right? And that's their cool little mm-hmm. – I mean, it's not their slogan, but I've seen it said in a couple yeah. of uh, forums and whatnot. And so for me, I can completely identify with that and get on board with that because in my mind, I think, awesome. There is nothing more American than saying, this is my private property. This is my – Uh, sincerely held beliefs and my rights and I have the right to say no to another person or to say no to even a government trying to suppress me that's what the Bill of Rights was all about that's what the Constitution is all about so I'm hugely and insanely on board with the Pink Pistols in the same token I'm amazed that more of the LGBTQ community does not to, of course now it's like LGBTQIAA. I can't keep up with all of the ad- additional letters. So, so do teach me is, is LGBT um, plus well, now what we're supposed to say? It, it, uh, 
I do I, desire to be respectful. At this point, but... who knows? Like, yeah. At this point, who knows? <laughs> I mean, the truth is, well, Mr. Trump and his campaign for president uh-huh. in 2016 on his website, he just had it simply LGBT plus. And okay. the real truth is, is that and the real movement is supposed to be about be who you are and and, you know, just be who you are. God, the creator made you as an individual. Why are you trying to to be something you're not meant to be? Um, we were all created beautifully independent and beautifully different. Why are we punishing people because we think God's creation isn't good enough? Like why? So it the real point about it is to be is to be all stripes of the rainbow, which is probably why, you know, Noah's not the only one known for the rainbow these days. <laughs> um, no, but, but I would get back to, to get back to your point. I think it's a lot more. I think it, I think you, I would, I would really like to check your premise for a moment that the LGBT community should be more conservative. Why can't the conservatives be more LGBT? You know, because That's fair question. If, and, and what do you mean lot, by that? A lot. A lot of this. So I guess is, we're not talking about SB fifty four anymore. This oh no, great. we'll get Keep to going. that. We'll get to <laughs> that. Going. We'll definitely get to SB fifty four in a moment. But conservatives should be much more for the LGBT community because we don't believe that because you are African American, for example, therefore you should be liberal. So why do we then pigeonhole the LGBT community and say because you're LGBT, you therefore should be liberal? Like it's this the same I, concept, this I, yeah. and it and if you notice, we're all about the government staying out of your life. We all think that everybody, so long as you're not hurting someone, if there is no victim, what's the problem? Live how you want to live. If you want to have an arsenal in your house, go buy it. Right? Like go buy your tank. I know I'm, I'm saving up for it. It's like a million dollars. Sorry, I looked it up. It's like 1.5 million for a tank, and I think that's ridiculous. We need to bring down the cost of tanks. <laughs> That should be our next movement. But anyway, we need to rent control tanks now. <laughs> yes, he but is then, leftist. But then, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that would be a very good question for them. I mean, that would be a very good question for them. But we, you know, conserv- free market capitalism is all about you pursuing your own individual interests, and it has nothing to do with who you want to be with. And we're all about freedom of religion. In my faith, I'm a Methodist. I don't you know, make any, that's, that's my, what I subscribe to. And we're all for LGBT plus inclusion in our faith. So why should the government be regulating how we are able to practice our faith? You know what I think? And I would flip this back to the LGBT community. The leaders of this movement are, are such crazies. Oh my gosh. Like they, (laughs) if don't do not go to salon or I won't even say their names because I don't want you going there, but they, um, the leaders of this movement are, are complete socialists and they win at any cost and they refuse to write about the great moment, great move, moments in our movement that were very for LGBT plus inclusion in our society. Namely when Sarah Palin stood up for the gay state trooper and um, vetoed the Democrat legislature passed bill that would ban him from being able to give his spousal benefits to his, to his husband and she said they're his benefits. Let him decide who to give them to. And yet the leaders of the LGBT community crucified her in 2008. Yes. And it's like, so tell me what incentive does a red state governor have to put their neck on the line for you after that? Donald Trump paid for Ryan White's medical bills. That poor, you know, junior high boy who contracted HIV because he had to have a blood transfusion at the hospital. And he was so stigmatized that they wanted, they tried, the parents tried to have this poor boy kicked out of school. Because they didn't want their kids going to school with him. Donald Trump flew over and befriended this kid with Michael Jackson and said, no, like, you know, we're all made from the same blood. You know, it shouldn't matter. Any of that shouldn't matter. And his company was one of the first companies to provide spousal benefits for same gendered partners that worked for him. And yet the LGBT community was all for him back in the early 2000s. But now, oh, no, he's not a socialist Marxist. We can't support that. Okay. You're all going to die. But this is something that also brings me back to this point of SB 54, because if these leaders of the LGBT community really cared about our state, they would be against SB 54. Because these areas where individuals are coming from, we see a spike in hate crimes against LGBT 
individuals. I wanted to talk about this at city council, but when you have, you know, 30, what is it? How long do you have? Like 20, two seconds? You have three two minutes. minutes. You have three minutes. And, and there that's was how 175 like, blue cards. Yeah, there was, yeah. <laughs> I think it was we a got night. To like we were there. What time were we there until we were there until like two in the morning? I had yes, to go to Denny's. Was I was absurd. so hungry and that was the only place open. But it brings over more individuals who are more susceptible to being against LGBT plus inclusion in society as a whole. And we see inside of these communities, I was at an event at the LG, Los Angeles LGBT center and we saw that there was a rise in, um, in crimes against the LGBT community inside of these areas. And I was just thinking to myself, okay, like, you know, correlation does not equal causation. So we can't say anything about that. Thing, yeah. But if you really did care about that, you would, you would be talking about that in the LGBT community, but we don't. Because, you know, The Advocate is – and all the other major publications inside of – that cater to this, this community don't, don't discuss it. And another thing that we didn't talk about at the city hall meeting was that with SB 54, everybody keeps wanting to talk about the statistics. The statistics. They're facts. They can't be – you know, we need numbers. Numbers don't lie, right? Well, as we found out, they most certainly do. There's and, lies, there's real like, lies, and there's and, statistics, as Mark Twain said. Yes, and and uh, so we want to look for statistics, but the truth is we don't know. We have not studied illegal immigrant crime in this country. And Mr. Trump, in his early days, of, in the very early days of his administration, in I think it was February of 2017, he said he wanted to to create a national statistic of crimes committed by foreign residents by foreign individuals within our, our country and oh my god the outcry from capitol hill like we will not forget that for some time who would have thought hiring government employees to do nothing but sit around and count numbers who would have thought that would be controversial <laughs> who would have thought but oh no it was because the truth is no one wants to know the honest truth is no one in the field of government wants to know the truth Either it will help your cause or it will hurt it. And you don't want to take that risk when there's so much money at stake. Kevin DeLeon doesn't want to know these statistics because he's betting his entire campaign for U.S. Senate on it. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to me that we are not approaching this issue rationally. We're approaching it with emotion, which we should. We should have a certain level of emotion in this because we're talking about lives. We're talking about families. But we should also be level-headed. And say what's really in the best interest for everybody. And I just happen to be of the opinion that this specific policy isn't right to help people. Because if you're bringing someone over and you're not giving them the tools to succeed, you're setting them up for a life of indentured servitude. You know, that's why the DREAM Act, which I mentioned inside of my comments that got so many views... Um, that's why the dream act exists because you're trying now you've created the, the government has created this problem where people are stuck in these horrible situations and now they're trying to fix it, which, you know, the government created this problem trying to do good and now they're trying to do good and they're creating more problems. And that's why I said this specific piece of legislation, SB 54 will exacerbate those problems. And it doesn't help people. It doesn't help poor people. It doesn't help immigrants that are coming to our country. It doesn't help those of us who are trying to follow the rules. And it doesn't hurt people of – or it doesn't help people in the LGBT community as well, which I do a lot of work with, with the Log Cabin Republicans. Okay. So we're going to have to take a break here in a second. But I do – I will. I want to get back to your question of – when I said, why don't more be Republican or conservative? And you said, well, why doesn't the conservative movement trend more LGBTQ? I think I got mm. a pretty solid answer for you when we come back. But we got to take a little hard break right now. This is Problem Solver mm. Politics. You're here with Cardinalis, your yes. host, and DJ Hamburger. The one and only. <laughs> Every year, thousands of local children, teens, and adults receive treatment at the Child and Family Center for depression, anger, anxiety, abuse, thoughts of suicide, and drug and alcohol addictions. Our professional staff provides outpatient services at office locations, in the home, the community, and on many elementary, junior, and high school campuses throughout our valley. If you need help, contact Child and Family Center at 259-9439 or childfamilycenter.org. Improving lives, one family at a time. Your hometown station. KHTS wants to help you save money. 
Go to shopkhts.com for half-price certificates to your favorite restaurants and businesses located right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Huge savings on your favorite places. You can also buy them right here at the KHTS studio during business hours. Start saving now. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Little Eye Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little Eye Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleeyeleaders.org. Men, are you feeling tired, stressed, or just don't have the energy you used to? Did you know this could be related to decreased testosterone levels? Luckily, there's a safe, effective solution. Weeder Prime helps support healthy testosterone levels with clinically tested key ingredients. Just two capsules of Weeder Prime each day can help change your mood, energy, focus, body fat, and lean muscle. Feel the way you felt 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Rediscover your prime with Weeder Prime. To find a retailer near you, visit WeederPrime.com. That's W-E-I-D-E-R Prime.com. The SCV Pregnancy Center has provided compassionate, personalized, and confidential care for 30 years. Angela Bennett, CEO. Positive urine test does not confirm pregnancy. It only indicates you may be pregnant. Only a doctor can diagnose and confirm pregnancy. If you used a home test and need answers immediately, the SCV Pregnancy Center will provide immediate pregnancy test results and uses the latest technology to confirm and diagnose pregnancy. The center specializes in pregnancy testing and confirmations. Make your appointment today. Visit scvpregnancycenter.org. All services free and confidential. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics with your host, Cardinellis. We are here with DJ Hamburger talking a little bit about uh, SB54. We're going to talk about the Boy Scouts of America, a huge transition that just happened with the LDS Church exiting their sanctioning participation of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, before we talk about the Boy Scouts, though, um, I want to answer your question about you said, why do you think um, more Republicans and more conservatives aren't pro-LGBT? I actually think the vast majority actually are. It depends on how you define pro. And also, just like you said, when you said the leadership of our movement is a bunch of socialist Marxists, mm-hmm. I, I have to tell you, mm-hmm. when, when, when you look at Proposition 8, for example, if we go all the way back to the 2000s, right, and, and, and you look at the things that the leadership of some of these lobbying organizations and these groups has done. I mean, I remember they tried to take away the 501c3 status of the Boy Scouts of America. Mm -hmm. They've tried Mm -hmm. to do that to multiple churches. They tried to do that to the LDS church. And when you say they fight dirty, I've never met a conservative organization that has gone after the tax-exempt status of any gay pride group. I've never met one. I would love to get an email that proves me wrong, but I have never got one. Yet I have seen wooden bricks thrown at Trump supporters by people that said, love Trump's hate. So I think there's a sensitivity in the American public to hypocrisy and hate in the name of love, I think rubs people very, very wrong. And also economics trumps everything. And I say that no pun intended. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know that were registered Democrats hardworking Americans that had businesses and companies that turned so Republican throughout the Mm -hmm. Obama years Mm -hmm. because of Jerry Brown's tax policies and Barack Obama's tax policies, even my employees of, of um, various Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, productions I was on in, we're talking liberal LA County when those Bush tax cuts went away and that 8% payroll relief was taken away, and all of a sudden, so they're getting less and less on their paychecks, we, and they're looking at me saying, why am I getting paid less when I'm doing the same work? And I'm telling you, you ain't getting paid less. The government's mm-hmm. taking more. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, when that reality sets in, the social issue is is not argue, as important no. as the economic issue. See, the problem with our society today is that okay. we don't talk to one another, all right? And we haven't learned how to talk to one another. And it's true. I think that's fair. So much of what you said there, you said that this is a social issue, and I would argue it's not. It is both a social and economic issue. When you have members of the LGBT community that are being 
you know, kicked out of their homes because we don't have fair housing non-discrimination and it's perfectly legal to discriminate against us. And inside of Tennessee, their um, recent religious liberty bill makes it perfectly legal for a doctor to deny care to a gay person who is an inch from death and 100% savable and cite religious liberty. And Wait, hold on it's, a second. Hold on a second. So that's something that we fought about back in um, 2015, I think, back when the religious liberty bills were all the rage. And right now, currently, the log cabin Republicans are not allowed at the Texas Republican Party state convention. We aren't even allowed to be have a booth there. We go, we really? want to give you money. We want to give you money. I thought that was the most Republican thing in the world. <laughs> Like, here okay, is money. So, so Let us sit here. We're and they're like, DJ, no. We're going to have DJ <laughs> Hamburger back talking about the claims yes, on these religious Yes, we can talk about that. Because I've known a lot it, of disinformation about those, but I'm not accusing you of disinformation. No, I'm no, just no, saying I don't fine. like speaking until I know all the yeah, information. Yeah. That, that does and strangely doesn't surprise me that the Texas Republican Party would have a strange view towards the log cabin yes, Republicans. Yes, Because yes. I know also I don't think you can buy a Tesla in the state, in of, the state Texas, of Texas, I read that too. Because of I read the, that too. Uh, the the oil lobby and whatnot, which is yeah. kind of a little pernicious. If you ask me, my mind. I mean, yes. ask 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 me you my like opinion. The word pernicious. I know. I just realized I said that three times in the show, and I, I do apologize. That was the fifth time by Let's... my count. <laughs> <laughs> but you. I do want to talk about the. You wanted to talk about the, the Boy, Boy Scout Scouts. issue, which I think is such an interesting. Well, hold on. Let's let's at least so tell the listeners. Let's so tell interesting. The... So what happened basically is. Uh, the Boy Scouts of America is uh, an organization that depends upon existing organizations to sanction their troops. A uh, uh, An elementary school can have its own scout troop. A church can have its own scout troop. Yes, uh, which... A local uh, rotary club can sponsor yes. its own scout troop. And that scout troop it is dependent upon the funding and the volunteer hours of that organization. Well, the largest sponsor of scout troops in all... All of North America is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also yes. known as the LDS Church. And also known as the Mormon Church, for those yeah, who aren't all, as familiar with the vocabulary. Yes, yes, also known as the Mormon Church. Yes. Or the true church, as we say in Mormonism. <laughs> so anyway, the uh, um, that you was a joke. There was a bunch is. of people that had no idea what that was out there. But okay. that was a joke, people. Yes. Don't write me letters, all right? Anyway, the... Uh, um, I'm actually surprised this didn't happen earlier because the church has been pushed around a lot on a lot of issues. And I think to a certain extent, it just, they got tired of it and it became insustainable because um, there's been probably four or five landmark things done in the past five to 10 years between the relationship of the Boy Scouts and the church. One of them being there was this big fight over, can you have gay scouts? And, and that went to the Supreme Court. When I was a boy and in Boy Scouts, that issue went to the nine Supremes that well, we have. Well, well in the yeah, there, there was the issue. And, of the the, girl. and they decided that a private organization is allowed to set its own rules of membership. The yeah. government is not. So, so the, only, yes, the only reason it, why I think that it's people, quite interesting. It's well, it's more than just interesting. See, I think that. The only reason why I think the whether you have uh, gay scouts or not thing was an issue for some people, and, and this this was my view at least, and I think it was I, I think it's fair to say it was shared by most people. Um, we just believe eight to eleven year olds, which is the Cub Scout age, and then eleven to twelve year olds, which is the Boy mm -hmm. Scout age. Most parents don't feel comfortable sexualizing children that early. Talking about homosexuality, let alone heterosexuality. I would be, feel uncomfortable with the scoutmaster that came in and just started mm -hmm. saying, oh, hey, guys, I'm straight. And this is what that means. Because I'm thinking I send my son to learn how to tie knots and do merit badges. And so I think there was a general discomfort, not necessarily with this false idea that, oh, our kids are at risk or whatnot, but with the sense of an agenda being pushed on an organization whose purpose is to teach something completely separate. So from this sexuality. is an issue that was settled yes, years ago. It was settled, yes. In 2012, right? Or 2014? It's come up three times. There's All right. The gay scout issue, so the girl scout issue, and then there's there that. The now issue. they recently announced that girls are allowed to join the Boy Scouts. Yes. 
and become Eagle. They're allowed to make the rank of Eagle Scout. And yes. then shortly thereafter, the Mormon Church decided that it would no longer support this organization. And or I they think develop their own. I think this yes. is a much more interesting issue because I think it's very sexist. I think this is a point of sexism in our society. You think so? Because girls in the Girl Scouts, which is okay, first of all, first of all, a majority of scouting organizations worldwide are co-gendered. France, for example, is co-gendered yes, in France their scouts. And, Sweden are, and the United Kingdom, the or, the country that founded the boy, the scouting organization altogether, is co-gendered as well. Well, we got two. So, minutes, so how is this in sexism? this two minutes? Uh huh. Where was the outrage when the Girl Scouts decided that a self-identifying girl is allowed to become a Girl Scout? And you mean a why, okay, like, okay. and why is it that we spend so long in our society obsessing over Eagle Scouts and the Eagle Scout Project when the Gold Award in Girl Scouts is equally as as challenging, and if not more so than the Eagle Scout rank is in Boy Scouts? So, in a and nutshell, yet we don't discuss that. We haven't. Where is the long, you know, where is the big media outrage about the Girl Scout Gold Award? And where where is the focus on Girl Scouts? And I really do think that, you know, if you think that Girl Scouts is a better program, you should be able to do that one. And if you think that Boy Scouts is more to your taste, do the Boy Scouts. Okay. Like, why pigeonhole people into what well, we think they should do? Okay, so we've got one minute. Let me see if I can sum this up in one minute. Um, which is just going to get a bunch of angry letters to me because it will be an oversimplification. So I do, I do apologize for the oversimplification. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of people are not angry necessarily with the what, but the how. I think they're very tired of getting pushed around. There already was co-ed venture crewing. There already was co-ed um, Boy Scout programs mm -hmm. that were good and functioned in a co-ed way. But it was an age where people felt more comfortable sending their children to a co-ed organization. A lot of parents don't feel that 13 and 14 is the age to begin these co-ed programs, but 15, 16, and 17 is. And the fact that the Boy Scouts buckled... Well, hold on a second, because I only got like 30 more seconds. <laughs> the fact that the Boy Scouts buckled to that peer pressure from organizations that, like you say, fight dirty and fight to... to uh, it's okay to fight to win, but fight to kill their opponent Where's is a different the, uh, thing. I never heard that these... Oh, well, finish. I'm sorry. Well, we're you know what? Time. Actually, <laughs> we're going to have to talk about this next week. We're just going to have to talk about this Next week, tune back in. It'll be week. much more exciting. And we're going to get DJ Hamburger back because... Uh, this, this is Maybe worthy of its cause. So this Problem after. Solver Politics with Cardinella. See you next week. Have fun. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM.